Welcome to Open Research Institute's FPGA stand-up for 1st of February, 2022. We're going to talk about what we did over the past week, what we're doing over the next coming week, uh, any blockers and any resources needed. Uh, so go ahead. You have the floor, Paul. Well, the main thing I've been working on is the uh, transition of the storage plan for the, the remote lab server, trying to get uh, large things off of the main virtual disk for each VM. And we're there. Now I have to just do the last step and move the VMs back to a configuration where they can run on the SSDs. And uh, next time I'm feeling competent to actually touch a computer other people are using, I will do that. Um, or preferably on a scheduled time that everybody agrees on, but nobody had an opinion last time I asked. Uh, so I may just impose a deadline on that. Um, that's what I've been doing. I don't have any blockers except for my own competence. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for being, for dissembling when you said, uh, when would be good. Um, because like the, you're talking like things about the parity check and the last moves of, of everything to get it set up to where it's fast and accessible. Is that, those are the two things you're talking about, right? Well, the parity check was a, another issue. Um, I have it set up once a week to run a check of the parity disk because it doesn't automatically check. Uh, yeah. The only way to know that this array is healthy is to do that periodically. And it takes about a day, yeah. a solid day to do that. And it does slow down the array when it's happening. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so I mean, so far I'm the only person that that has run into the slowness of of working like on Choco Cat. So I'm okay with that if because I can just ask you to pause it if I'm working on something directly and and all. So I don't want you to move the the time because it doesn't affect anybody else. I I think except us. And yeah, if just impose a deadline. I think as long as it's not hitting anybody in the UK or Europe that it's that it's good because anybody here or anybody in the US we can easily get in touch with and make sure that you know they that they know about it but i would like to not inconvenience anybody in any other time zone as a priority right which is why i wanted everybody to pre agree that there was a time that they could do it without could have a downtime without disrupting their work. Yeah, I think that morning for us and evening in the UK, keep that clear as possible. Yeah. And that would probably fix it for the most part. So it, so in other words, probably late night for us, which, uh, you know, given your night owl habits might be the best, uh, then that would be the best time to do this sort of work because I'm not a night person and, and any, but the very few other people in the US are so. But don't worry about like trying to get 100% consensus, just, you know, uh, make it least painful and just get it done quickly. And then we'll, I think that's probably the best combination. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And no resources, no blockers outside of, outside of that sort of stuff. And we'll talk more about it. Well, there are always ways we can use more resources to yeah. <laughs> make things better and faster. Right? You're happy to buy more computer equipment, but okay. I don't think we need to right now. All right. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, there's no way we could do it without you. So uh, it's very appreciated. All right, I'll take a brief moment. Uh, so so I actually built a peripheral, a toy peripheral and a DMA controller and I'm learning how to work from, now I'm learning how to operate DMA from the processor side um, to ca catch up to everybody and to make sure that I can uh, employ all of the wonderful IP. Um, the reference design actually looks really good. Uh, learning more and more about that every day. Um, the, the support that we've gotten for analog devices is interesting. Uh, all support is through their forum, the engineer zone. And so it's very similar to like Xilinx where they go, oh, just go ask the forum. Um, so, but I know a couple of people at analog devices and I've gotten completely different answers when they've answered back. So it's the usual sort of, <laughs> it's the usual sort of situation. Um, but yeah, so, so that's what I've been, been doing to, to get better at this sort of thing. And uh, please let me know if there's there's anything that anybody needs. What we're looking at doing is, well, the the, the base computer, like the, the equivalent of Chonk in the Remote Lab South is, is up and running and accessible. It's called Chubb. 
um, but we need to build a building there in order to have the same sort of equipment set up. Um, and the remote lab situation for M17 project is coming right along. And there's some, some optimism that the, the M17 centric lab will be up uh, or at least uh, a lot of progress in March. Um, so if you're interested in M17 or uplink development in particular, then, then that's gonna be of, of interest uh, coming up here real soon. And then uh, Anshul is interested in setting up a remote lab or lab station in the UK. And I'm trying to get that uh, approved as it involves a purchase uh, uh, as quickly as I can. So that's that's what I've been up to. Um, yeah, it looks like the encoder, if we can just get it fed right, we'll be able to test it. And since it already has been uh, looked at very closely using GNU radio and it it passed all of those tests and and passed a lot of, of, of other tests, then I'm pretty confident that we can that we show it on the air that it will be um, It'll actually work and then we'll see something over the air. Now, can we test it on the receive side? I'm not really sure, probably not exactly yet, uh, but that's that's uh, you know seeing a signal going out over the air that looks reasonable for a DBBS2 encoder. That's gonna be a, a nice thing to see. Okay, so that's a little bit of what, what I've been doing. Um, like like Paul, you know, the blockers are generally my own competence and, and just figuring out uh, how to help people. Um, no, no resources needed yet uh, here. I think we're in, we're still in good shape. Uh, looking forward for the next week, the the big thing for us is our uh, quarterly meetup, uh, which uh, thanks to Thomas Perry, we now have that as a as a event, um, and we have a wide variety of people coming to the event. Fred Harris will be there to talk about. Um, you know, uh, his, his interest is in uh, polyphase filter banks and supporting work in there. And we have plenty of that going on. So he'll be, he plans on attending the meeting to, to help out. He's already provided a, a MATLAB script for the encoder side of, of M17 for the uplink. Um, I'd really like to get started on polar codes uh, using MATLAB as the, the way forward for that at remote labs, uh, possibly using the, the ZCU 106 in order to avoid any conflict with the ZC706 station. Uh, the rest of that quarterly meetup will be about uh, the end-to-end -end demo and a lot about M17, including Codec 2 improvements. Um, a lot of us are really not satisfied at all with the Codec 2 performance, uh, the way it sounds, and we would like to see it improved. The, the bulk of the Codec 2 team has been very, very motivated and interested in improving the very low rate end of Codec 2, like all the way down to 800 hertz. We are going to, we want to use like 3200. We want to use as many bits as possible because there's no replacement for displacement, just like in an automobile. But the attention that has been paid to the higher, what they consider higher rate vocoders has been uh, pretty sparse and it's not been looked at in a couple of years. So there is some work from the M17 team about Codec 2 and making our, our voice quality uh, sound as good as it possibly can. So I'm all in on that because uh, no crappy Codex is a requirement. And so that'll be coming up on February 5th. It's uh, a.m. in the morning, U.S. time, evening, Europe. Uh, all the links are on the website and have been in Slack. Everyone's invited. Uh, so this, the schedule posted is a guideline. If we end up blowing the schedule or talking about way more than what's posted, then that would be good. It'll be recorded, edited, and, and posted. All right, so that's the stuff coming up. The next person I have on the list is Anshul. You have the floor. Yes, uh, hi. So yeah, as you must be aware, uh, on, through the Slack channel, what I've been doing, my aim is to use that uh, Thomas's code uh, and get my PS up and send the data from YouTube and through PSPL and over the air. And that's what I've been working on. Uh, successes, so um, I picked up after a month of gap. So, uh, my, uh, I'm able to synthesize and generate a bit stream out of Thomas's code. Uh, that's based out of ADI uh, example design. It's pretty, uh, it's it's going fine. Uh, also successful in building better Linux. Uh, so that's also fine. Uh, now the next part is uh, to combine them and uh, get a running solution out of that. Uh, right now I'm not aiming for integrating dvbs 2 into the picture. So let me get this first, the basic one, 
end to end working and then i can i will uh, integrate so the aim is same just a different approach uh, that's what i'm working on and from blocker perspective yeah it's all good as soon as, uh, as uh, choco cat is working fine uh, no issues over there just had a minor hiccup with the card i think that's that's resolved so yeah it's fine yeah sorry about that that that's fine all right any so any other blockers or or any resources needed no uh, okay uh, just my dependency is on card as much as if that's available i'm happy yeah. The only thing is what I foresee is if Suoto and you are doing some setup and I'm also working on it, then it will be yeah. a major broker. So we need to think something about, we need to do something about that. Yeah, this has been a sort of a, a thing that that is right in the front of our minds is how to coordinate yeah. best with a shared resource. And um, so far coordinating over Slack, checking mm -hmm. in on Slack and seeing if that, that that's, that's what we ended up doing like we mm -hmm. did today. Um, it's... <sighs> It, it would be great if there was some sort of automated way to do it. So if anybody can think of a way to do it, then we'll pioneer it and, and test mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll just, we'll continue to try to coordinate amongst ourselves. Um, right, uh, but for future reference, uh, like I post a message and then there is some lag and then I get a reply, that's yes. Normal. So uh, shall I proceed ahead and reset it or is there yeah. a persistent thing? Yeah, on I think, Yes, if anybody is actually actively working on it, like if they're typing away, then usually they're like, usually I'm on Slack reporting all the goofs, right? <laughs> Asking for like, well, this is weird, you know, or woohoo, it worked. And and it, since since people are probably on Slack, if they're working on the, the station, then posting there, and if you don't hear anything in some reasonable amount of time, and if you mm -hmm. look at the, if you look at the Choco Cat and you see, oh, well, you know, there's no activity here, mm -hmm then go ahead and do whatever you're doing. And, okay. that, you know, uh, it's worst case, somebody somebody was off at dinner, comes back and someone else has got the station. That's all right. That's <laughs> that's the worst case and it's it'll be yeah. fine. So yeah, please proceed if you don't hear back immediately. Like if and it doesn't, you're looking and there's like no active stuff. It's just mm -hmm. this processes that have been idle for hours, then please go right in ahead and grab it. You know, this is for you, and it's provided for for people to to grab and go. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Let's see. The next person that I have on the list is uh, is Thomas Perry. Hello. You have the floor. Hello. Um, yeah, I've been out of the loop for a couple of months now, unfortunately. Um, so I haven't really done anything in that time. Sorry to say, but um, yeah, I was kind of curious how you guys get on and where there might be some places I can help. Um, maybe kind of a couple of hours a week, unfortunately, is all I can manage at the moment. But yeah, if you think there's something I can help with, just um, let me know. Oh, yeah. No, a couple of hours of your, a couple of hours from you a week is uh, worth probably weeks of other people's time. Sure. No, we've been uh, doing what we set out to do in the last quarterly uh, meeting that you chaired and uh, just trying to get those things done and made a lot of progress in some areas and then some other areas turned out to be a lot uh, more difficult. Uh, so things are, are following the trajectory towards an end-to-end -end demo. Um, so yeah, it should all look really familiar. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah, the, the DMA stuff is, is a nightmare. I know. It is, so, but yeah. you know, it, it, it's remarkable because like um, uh, it it's making sense. I think that we're going to have a path forward, and then um, a, a strong motivation for me is to provide enough documentation to where somebody can can get up to speed and actually use our particular uh, layout and demo and and method. So you know, since we're using starting out, the recommendation to start out with the analog devices uh, reference design is fantastic, but, and especially for the ninety three seventy one because DMA is what you use. And there's an awful lot of stuff that's already set up for us. So this is the best possible way forward to get to get people on board and to get our our particular modules and our particular work working. But yeah, it's it's difficult. If it was uh, you know, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it and doing it well. So yeah, <laughs> these, are, sure. yeah, these, are, yeah. these are ambitious high tech things that we're doing. And these are fortunately, you know, the good side is that these are very portable skills that people can then uh, be justifiably proud of doing moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to add that, Michelle, uh, I'm also at the same point where I'll be, I will be DMing data from PS and PL. So share your learnings on the Slack. I will also share and let we can progress together. We'll do. Yeah, that, uh, absolutely. 
Thomas, are you, are you, would you be able to come to the meeting on the 5th? Is that a good time for you? Um, yep, yep, I can be there. Yep. Cool. Okay. Yeah, it should be yep. should be good. Um, it's a wide variety of stuff. And if you see something in the schedule that you want to kind of move around, let just let me know if you're if you'd like for something to be uh, earlier or later. Then then I'm happy to do that. Okay. Yep. I will. Cool. Yep, forward to it. Okay. Uh, next person that uh, has the floor, Sawato. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so uh, this past week, um, so yeah, I did some um, stuff with the ADRV nine three seven one um, environments project project. Uh, yeah, basically added the uh, the encoder. Like it, it was not great. Like it was like <laughs> things around, but um, scattered around. But um, hopefully, there now there is a script that we can use to sort of test the thing um, quickly. And I, I, I also, think, also think it might uh, be useful for Pluto stuff. Um, but yeah, never mind. Uh, so I've started some of, of, of um, synths and stuff uh, on Vivado 2019.1, the thing crashes. Um, I The next supported version, of, according to analog devices, the, the repository is 2021.1 and then there is and when I that seems to run okay except the I think the license demon or something um, oh yeah yeah, yeah put, you yeah, yeah you put you put that in slack and that looks like something that we might be able to fix yeah yeah so besides yeah besides that uh, I am um completing the presentation stuff, um, like uh, recording and putting stuff together. Um, I think I can get it done, well, ho hopefully, I don't know, tomorrow or something. Oh, right on. That'd be, that's well ahead of schedule. I think the, the videos are due for Ham Expo on the 15th, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for doing that. It's, there's a lot of people looking forward to, to listening to your talk. Cool, and, cool. and thank you for sharing the slides ahead of time. It looks amazing. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks. Um, thanks. Yeah, cool. The uh, yeah, the ADRV 9371 has been remarkable to to learn how to use. And, <laughs> and um, yeah, yeah, just to add a little tiny bit to to what Swato's uh, talking about is that the the instructions from analog devices say, okay, here is our reference design, and then you need to add your IP in using these scripts. The and that works for, I think, relatively simple RTL modules. Um, but if you've if you've written something a little more complicated, uh, then the, there's some script collision and some some duplication of adding in libraries and things like that, which gorps it up. Uh, and then, so so what Andre did is he said he started with his repo and builds everything and adds everything and then adds in the reference design, and that's. That looks pretty slick. Uh, it, now it hasn't worked, you know. But then again, adding the, you know, adding our IP into the reference design means that we need to manually connect everything up to when you add the module in with the little plus on the block diagram. So it's like either way, we'll we'll feel our way through and and figure out what the best way is, and then document it. So that's where we're at this week. All right, and then uh, hello. It's Richard Hambly, and uh, I know Richard and uh, W2GPS. I've worked with them in the past. Uh, welcome to the meeting, and let us know. Uh, you have the floor, so uh, so take it away. Okay. Well, not a whole lot to say. I have, you might be surprised to know, been following very carefully since the beginning uh, your efforts, and I fully support them. Uh, someday we'll talk about that. But um, I have moved to Colorado since we last talked, which is part of why I've been keeping a low profile. Um, we moved out here, we sold our house and moved out here with no prospects at all uh, as to where to live. We moved on to the Air Force Base for a month while we were looking for a house, then into a motel for another month while we waited to close on a house. And now we have the place I'm in now. The background looks very similar to Maryland because it's all the same furniture in the room where I earn my living, not my ham shack. 
we now have five acres uh, far out from the city, 10 miles to the nearest store in, in a uh, pine forest called Black Forest. And in fact, we're very close to some other hams that I'm sure you know. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're just starting to get our feet on the ground. Uh, I was tempted to chime in and tell you that I have a license, uh, my own commercial license for MATLAB, but <clears throat> I, I never really advertise that because I never have the right modules. Anything I want to do with MATLAB <laughs> is, oh, it's only $1,000 for this module, but that module is contingent on these three other modules. So it's, every time I want to do something different, it's $5,000 more, and I never have the right modules. Right. So I have the modules that I need to uh, analyze data from my test facility, which you can't see, but it's next to me. Um, anyway, I do yeah. use it. No, but... I, I, I have only empathy because what we would really like to do is to, to include a path from, from MATLAB all the way through to FPGA ASIC design. Yes. And the, the, you don't just need the HDL coder uh, no, no, toolbox. Not, it's always... <laughs> It's always, and it, it's this, and that, yeah, of course, you know, they would like for you to buy it all. So we, what the good news is that Open Research Institute did get accepted into the startup program at MATLAB, which gives us a pretty good discount because we were using the, um, what's called the home license from MATLAB, which is a yes. shockingly it has a, great almost deal. Almost everything. It has almost, almost everything. Almost. Except, except. H HDL coder and yes, GPU. The things you actually need. Yes, and GPU coder and yep, MATLAB yep, coder, which is the yep. so the heterogeneous computing cannot be done with the home license, and also exactly. L LTE. If you're interested in like 5G and LTE, can't get that either. And it's not no. that you can't get it; you can't even get a callback from sales. So, right. Right. but uh, for general purpose use, the the home license is a screamingly huge, awesome deal. Um, yeah. it, it makes why. it possible for, for people like us to do, to do MATLAB. And that's why I have begun, uh, although with all this moving, I haven't gotten very far, but I've begun saying to myself, why is it that everybody is using Python these days? It's a crappy looking language, but everybody's using it, so I better learn it. So I've been trying to learn Python and I'm discovering that many of the things that I was using MATLAB for can be done in Python if you're willing to put up with its interesting syntax. Uh, but so Python is, is on my list. And uh, the other thing is I have a project, uh, a commercial project, so I won't describe it in detail, but uh, the initial project was uh, take this open source design and relay it out. Uh, I use LPM Designer, again, a commercial license for LPM Designer with all the whistles and bells, um, and just relay it out and add all this stuff around it that we want for this interesting project. And of course, the open source design was based on a Zinc, Xilinx Zinc series processor. Shortly after I agreed to do the job, it was discovered that no Zinc processor of any kind, any number, any, any in that series can be purchased anywhere in the world. Right. And so Xilinx told my customer, well, why don't you just use these other processors? So all of a sudden the processor went from, you know, the 30 to $100 range to the $1,000 processor. And they said, well, there's a couple of reasons why we don't want to do that. But among them is we wanted the ARM core and the, and, and the interfaces, uh, high-speed interfaces to the uh, uh, thing. So, so now I have an entirely different project, which is to take the open source 
hardware and build a mezzanine board and plug it into that hardware with all the extra stuff we wanted. And it's a freaking pain in the neck. Uh, and I can tell you lots of reasons why that is. Yeah, uh, well, I think we yeah. can all we can all definitely relate. The supply yeah. chain issues have been crushing. So if you know of anybody who would be willing to spend five minutes taking an open source PCB layout, not the schematic, just the layout, and putting it in a licensed cadence uh, layout software and pushing it out as an ASCII file and giving it back to me, uh, that would be great help to me <laughs> in that project. But anyway, so yeah, um, I, I logged into this because this morning I'm feeling like checking to see what you're up to. And I thought I'd log into the FPGA one because I'm doing FPGA work. Yeah. And, oh, thank you. No, it's yeah. a it's a remarkable to hear your big adventure in moving and uh, all the things you've been up to. Yeah, I, I I wish I had time to tell you why you should not do that. <laughs> <laughs> not in my a, age anyway. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> and, and of course, in after I moved here, I lost Tom, as you I'm sure heard. Yeah. And uh, well, anyway, we're trying. We, we, I'm, I'm, I was hoping someday to volunteer, but mostly I only have time right now to watch and say that is really cool stuff you're doing. Well, thank you. It means a lot you know, and uh, makes a difference and uh, keeps us going. So it's, uh, it's deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. All right, we have a, a rival. We have Stefano. Uh, please, you have the floor. Yeah, so the, uh, the <coughs> uh, nothing more to you know, nothing much to do. Okay. Uh, Stefano, you have a whole lot of background noise. Uh, sorry. Uh, this is the best microphone I have. Oh dear, okay. <laughs> well, sorry, no, I have nothing to do. Oh, okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah, if you want to put it in chat, then I can I can put that into the to the meeting record if uh, if there's anything you want to share. You bet. Cool. Okay. Uh, some events coming up. We'll be at Hamcation, um, and there'll be lots and lots of talking going on. we we have a couple of meetings with Flex Radio to keep in touch with them, um, and. We're looking forward to, to working with ARRL and ARRL Foundation some more. Um, we have uh, put together a, a, a collection of booths. So we work very closely with Tapper. Uh, so me and Scotty will be pulling all sorts of uh, crazy things off at Hamcation. M17 Project has their own booth right next to us. And the Society of Amateur Radio Astronomers has a booth and a talk with us as well. So those uh, three other organizations are yeah, well, M17 is a ORI project, but we're trying very hard to make sure that they launch independently and well. Uh, so there'll be plenty coming up in the next couple of weeks for from and about Hamcation. And then immediately after that is uh, uh, Ham Expo, an online event with SWATO being a, a big uh, presenter. Uh, and we applied for and paid for a, uh, a nonprofit booth at Ham Expo to give a gathering place and, and kind of present our work and can show videos there. Uh, I haven't heard back on that, so I'm going to check in on that today to make sure it goes forward. There isn't any other big events planned until DEF CON in the, at the end of summer, uh, but we'll be DEF CON in RF uh, Village. And really looking forward to that. We've uh, been there before, and it's an enormous quantity of people like us, and looking forward to, to maybe bringing some demos. Um, it'll be hard to ship demos or take demos, demonstration equipment to uh, Florida because we have to travel by air. Uh, the advantage to DEF CON is that it's close enough to where Remote Lab West can drive over there and set up um, uh, anything that, that's working. <laughs> so, so be able to set up hardware for an in-person demo. We've done that in the past with polyphase filter banks and, and other things, and it's been of, of great value. So we'll be doing that at the end of the summer if everything continues to improve uh, like it has been in terms of um, you know COVID challenges. All right, any other comments or questions before we close for today or requests to me or anything that you need from me? Cool. Okay. I'll. Oh, so sorry. Go ahead. Um, just just to mention, uh, 
My email address is the same. My website is the same. My cell phone number is the same. Feel free to call me if you'd ever like to chat. Sure. No, I'd like to. I look forward to that. Good to have you back on on the on ground. <laughs> I know you had a lot of balls in the air. Cool. Okay, everybody, see you on Slack, and uh, looking forward to the uh, the meeting on the fifth. See ya. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Bye.